you've got your pig's head here. They always look so friendly. Very cheerful looking pig. Yes, I know that that pig wasn't actually smiling at me. But there's no mistaking the genuine welcome you'll receive at Siabermart, a mini chain of Portuguese and Central and South American supermarkets based in the legendary Portuguese stronghold of Newark, New Jersey. Exploring its aisles, jam-packed with a rainbow of chili pastes, salty fish, and porky delights, is an occasionally shocking, always enjoyable way to learn how much there still is to discover in the remarkably varied cuisines of Peru, Brazil, El Salvador, and beyond. So let's get cracking. It's time to get lost in the supermarket. I'm standing here next to the assortment of Easter candy here at Siabra. I am a little intimidated. Siabra has an amazing assortment from a lot of regions that I'm not completely familiar with. Hopefully I will find some things that I understand and discover some new things too. Easter candy being one of those things, that pastel Easter egg theme covers a wide assortment. These kind of look like jelly beans, but they're actually sugar-coated pine nuts. Mmm. So instead of it being mere sugar, it's sugar-covered nuts, which are so much more interesting and delicious. I'm feeling encouraged. I'm going to dig a little deeper. Nice, impressive little assortment in the banana family here. We've got your green bananas. Got your green plantains under here, papayas all around. When you circle back over here, you got your red bananas. And <laughs> my personal favorite, the baby banana. First of all, perfect snacking size. A little bit more candy-like sweetness than the big brother banana. So what I especially love about markets that cater to a specific cuisine is that they actually make it easier to cook that cuisine. Here we've got a helpful bin of shredded collard greens, often sauteed with a little bit of coconut oil, and they have it all sliced and ready for you. The seafood section is pretty remarkable. You have this amazing frozen section of seafood. You need your frozen octopus tentacles, they're right here for you. We've got an entire octopus encased in a ball and frozen. Buying it frozen is actually really smart because freezing it tenderizes it. These look like little sprats. Delicious little fishes. It's ready to thaw, batter, and fry. These appear to be onion rings, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that they're breaded frozen squid rings. Also a great place to be if you're a calamari fan. This is a very essential convenience product. So this is easily one of the most special, amazing parts of Siabra Market. We have the bacalao room. Salted dried cod bacalao is a great way to preserve fresh fish. Also, the salting and drying process concentrates the flavor and makes the texture kind of denser. You've got bacalao in different salt levels, different grades, a few different types of fish too. Let's head into the bacalao chamber. <laughs> This one, this is the best. This is the best one? Yes. Okay. It's kind of from Norway. Norwegian cod. Yes. And then salted. Now salted in Portugal. So it's been traveling the world yes. to come here. The fact that it's being sold whole and cut to order, it's going to be as fresh as possible. It is impeccable, it is pristine. It is sliced with a chainsaw. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Very That's good. great. Yeah, it actually is pretty soft on the inside. Yeah, good, Not good. totally dried good. out. Great. Welcome. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs> Siabra may be home to New Jersey's only church of salted fish, but the market gives plenty of reverence to the fresh stuff too, with special Mediterranean varieties often imported straight from Portugal. This is not a fish fillet eating culture, this is a fish steak eating culture. Anything that has the bone in and the skin around it is definitely going to have more flavor and be juicier and more delicious. And then just like a gorgeous array of fresh fish here. There is a lot of fearless hacking and cutting and bandsawing going on here. I feel, while I'm watching this, a little scared for the people who are doing this, but they are such professionals that obviously there's nothing to worry about. Now we're in the butcher shop and they've got some pretty amazing things here. Really fresh looking cuts of pork ribs. Another thing you don't often see, goat cabrito. It's a young goat. 
right? I've already committed to an enormous bag of bacalao, but I kind of want to get a whole baby goat too. An incredible array of cooked sausages. They make it in-house, which is pretty remarkable. We've got a really beautiful, like kind of loin-like piece here, and then a nice amount of fat. And you can see the marbling of chili spices. This is a smoked sausage, so you can eat it raw, but also really delicious simmered in stews. Salt pecan version, larger, with a lot of really deep flavors. I can tell already sweet, almost raisiny chili flavor. This is really amazing sausage. Does anyone else want some sausage? Really special to be able to taste the Portuguese version of prosciutto. It seems softer than an Italian style prosciutto. Hand cut, so it's definitely thicker. A little bit less salty. I would almost compare it to like a prosciutto San Daniele, just with that really like pure, sweet pork flavor. And here we have a veritable shrine of sausage. This looks like a uh, blood sausage, some chorizo down here. This is what's completely blowing my mind right now. This is salted raw pork. The great alternative if you want something a little different than your fresh pork over at the butcher counter. Truly crazy assortment of chorizo here. Peruvian chorizo, Uruguayan, Spanish, Calabrese, Ecuadorian chorizo, Argentinian chorizo, Salvadorian chorizo, Mexican chorizo. It's a world tour of chorizo sausages. The baby goat carcasses were just the beginning. Piled alongside the butcher counter is a mini Costco of meat in massive slabs with top-notch cuts sold for rock-bottom prices. We're in the enormous cut of meat section of the supermarket. This is an entire like slab of short ribs on the bone. You've got your ribeyes here. <laughs> Imagine how many ribeye steaks you can get from this entire slab. Shell steak, okay, also a really good idea if you're feeding a crowd. And the meat section just keeps on going and getting more and more interesting all the while. So now we're getting into some truly beautiful types of pig parts here. Pork tripe ruffle fat just sounds very decorative. You've got like nose to tail, literally right here. Everything in between, nothing is wasted. From cow to sheep to goat, the cheese section at Siabra is dense with delicious flavors. And those cheeses often come in delightfully large rounds. Cheese, cheese. Yeah, these are all cheeses that I've just never had before. I think I should just try this ball of sheep's milk cheese and just see what happens. Kind of like a semi-soft cheese. It almost feels like a kind of sticky mozzarella, but a lot more flavorful. It kind of almost tastes like an aged sheep's milk with the texture of a soft mozzarella. I bet it melts really nicely too. Got your queso blanco. This one's wrapped in plantain leaves. And if you're down for making the pau de quejo, that Brazilian cheesy bread, this is the cheese that you want to use. I need that. The freezer aisle at Siabra is a wonderland, a visual encyclopedia that showcases the stunning technicolor variety of produce grown south of the United States that usually never crosses our borders. The freezer aisle here at Siabra is almost like a second fresh produce aisle. This is traditional Andean corn on the cob. So you can see the kernels are like at least three times as big as ordinary corn kernels. These are whole red peppers. They look like tomatoes. They have little recipes on the back. You can cook this with mussels and make it into a spicy sauce, which sounds truly delicious. Ahi Amarillo, I've only had it in chili sauces. The fact that you have it straight like this, raw and frozen, means that you can make a vat of your own sauce. Baked plantains, even though they're frozen solid, they're smushy and soft because they're so sweet. It's seaweed salad. I feel like I've seen this in a Japanese mix. I never knew that seaweed was a part of Peruvian cooking. This is just really eye-opening to me. Every door I open unleashes my ignorance of South American fruit. I know what a mango is. I know what a papaya is. Naranjila? I have no idea what that is. It looks like it might be kind of a guava, but it looks gorgeously green. Soursop? It's like um, a delicious beverage. I feel like any of these things blitzed into any kind of fruit juice or smoothie would be absolutely unforgettable. 
Okay, I think I'm done here. Siaber might not have a food court, but its super concentrated selection of regional pastries, snacks, cakes, and breads is all the consolation I need. First of all, it's warm. It's thawing my cold hands. It's also filled with delightfully breaded, fried things. I'm really intrigued by this crab risoi. It's like bacalao. It's a combination of dried salt, cod, and potato. This looks like a combination of crab and potato. Definitely a garlicky edge to it. This food is totally bringing me back to life. Chicken ball. It's more like a chicken teardrop. Some steam coming off of it. It almost has like um, a pau de queijo type glutinous chew on the inside, a crunchy crust. This is not just potato. There's definitely something more interesting going on. Mm. Now the sweets counter here is just as tempting as the savory fried foods area, which is a really huge statement. This is practically a love letter to eggy, milky custard things. It's like raining sugar as I'm even lifting this. So the cake is nice and eggy. It tastes like a pretty classic Genoise style cake, so a lot of um, frothy, egg yolky fluffiness. This is pretty much like a jelly donut, only it's filled with milk jam. It kind of almost looks like a cajeta, or like a milky caramel. It's just like all of this ooziness coming out. There's like a pretty potent sweetness. I feel like I could probably jump up and hit the ceiling right now. And of course, tres leches. This cake shouldn't be as delicious as it is. It's completely drenched in liquid, which is not exactly a typical cake making strategy. Turns it into this kind of cross between pudding and cake. You gotta love a cake that when you press on it, it releases liquid. The array of options in Siabra's middle aisles is just as fascinating as its outer perimeter, with an array of drinks, spices, condiments, and beans that puts any overpriced gourmet market to shame. It's a wall of tropical juices. We've got rocha-style pears, guava. My particular favorite is cashew fruit juice. Do I need to drink this straight from the carton in the middle of the supermarket? I guess I do kind of like apricot juice, but like not as puree-like. This aisle is all about the Goya. You're going to find an amazing assortment of juices, adobo powder, every kind of bean known to man. It just keeps going and going. Ah. More regional grains here and legumes. You've got a whole other section of beans here. Canary beans, which definitely taste delicious when braised with like a hunk of salt pork. When you get into places like Peru, the variety of chilies and the fruitiness and flavor of those chilies is just like remarkable. And if you aren't always able to get to a supermarket to get the fresh versions, these chili pastes are a really good thing to stock in your pantry. Ricotto pepper, that's that tomato looking pepper. Ahi mirasol, ahi amarillo. It almost looks like mango puree, but it's just like a super fruity chili pepper. Sweet potato jam. I mean, this kind of looks like a cousin to Membrillo. I've never even heard of jam being made from a sweet potato, but I bet you could probably use it in the same way. Just slice it up, serve it alongside cheese. It would be really delicious. If you're ready to make your pau de queijo, this is what you need. Sweet manioc starch, which you mix with your milk, your eggs, and some of that special cheese to make your delicious Brazilian cheesy bread. Here you've got farofa, which is this kind of like crumbly cassava flour that's toasted and sprinkled onto things, almost like breadcrumbs, right before you eat them as like a topping. So this aisle starts out with a pretty typical thing, olive oil, but none of these labels look familiar to me, and that's because these are all Portuguese olive oils. The romance and drama of these olive oil containers just really can't be beat. Portugal might not be as famous as Spain or Italy or France for their olive oils, but they are absolutely delicious, and this is a great place to get it without spending too much money. Over here, we get into the spicy, vinegary, delicious pickled things that are so good with all the fried snack treats. Some really delicious piri piri sauce, a whole bunch of dried ground chilies here. We have a vinegar jam packed with tiny little peppers. I think I'm going to try this chili. Yeah! <laughs> it is so spicy, but flavorful. 
Very, very delicious. I definitely want it with something fried and porky and fatty because it on its own is a little overwhelming. Like that shot of chili spiked vinegar, my visit to Siabra has left me feeling invigorated, amazed, and ready to eat something crispy and porky. And it's pretty much inevitable that you'll feel the same way when you walk through the doors, because the market is a testament to the treasure trove of food cultures that are often overshadowed by Mexico and Spain, but are no less delicious. And if you see someone vaguely familiar standing underneath the chandelier in the bacalao room, chances are it'll be me.